anointing means God's presence upon a man. The anointing is not just the oil, but anointing is God's presence upon a man. That's why every time you read the Bible, the Bible says, and after he was anointed, the spirit of God was with him. The Bible says, and David was anointed by Samuel. And from that day onwards, the spirit of God was with him. And that is because anointing is the presence of God. The Bible says, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went around doing good? We know the scripture. For God was with him. Meaning every time God anoints a man, he anoints a man to monitor a man. Let me say that again. Because some of you now, what you're used to is monitoring spirits. Not all monitoring spirits are diabolic. Angels are called ministering spirits that are with you 24-7. What are they doing? They are monitoring you. But these are divine beings. So when God anoints a man, he does not anoint a man to live a man. He anoints a man to be with a man. Therefore, anointing is God's presence upon a man. I know a lot of people think anointing is in other things and all of that. It comes down to the presence of God. Allow me to pass by somewhere and then I take you higher in the Holy Ghost. When you read the Bible, you realize that there is a man called Samson in the book of Judges. Strong man, mighty man. By his hands, the man could lift up gates and climb mountains. That's how strong this man was. Until the Philistines hired a lady, a woman called Delilah. And of course, we know the story. Delilah kept on asking him, what is your secret? Where is the secret of your power? That then she will tell you something. It means Samson was not buff. He was not muscular. If he was, there was no need for Delilah to ask, where is the secret of your power? He was an ordinary looking guy, but he had strength beyond his appearance. And Delilah wanted to know, where is your power? And of course, the Bible says, and she did this for many days and times. And the Bible then says, it came to pass where, she said, if you love me, tell me. And he lied, of course, and the Bible says, she called the Philistines and they came in and she woke him up Samson, Samson, the Philistines are here. And the Bible says, and he woke up and he said, don't worry, I will do like I always do. And the Bible says, and he defeated them. Second time he did the same thing. Then the Bible says, and he ended up telling her his secret. Saying, if you cut my hair, power will leave me. And the Bible then said, she did take him to a barber shop. <laughs> of course, she's the one who was cutting him. And after that, I wanted to check something here. She shook him and said, the Philistines are here. Oh, Samson. And the Bible says, and he woke up and he said to her, don't worry, I will do like I always do. The Bible says he did not know. Pay attention now. Pay attention to what the Bible says. He did not know that the presence of God had left him. It does not say he did not know that his hair was removed. All along, we see and we believe and we, are, uh, we have come to know that his strength and his power is in his hair. But the Bible says, when he said, I will do as usual, he did not know 
that the presence of God had left him. Meaning the strength of this man was the presence of God. So the anointing is the presence of God upon a man. That's why you can't live your life anyhow. you can't just sleep with anything anyhow you can't just talk to anybody anyhow because there are people who are harbors are you hearing what i'm saying harbors of demonic spirits that the moment you engage with them the presence of god will not have a choice but to move away from you that's why anointed people understand that it is important to guard the presence of god i'm not guarding the anointing i'm guarding the presence of god can remain but the presence of God can go so anointing means the presence of God upon a man 